Right, okay, in one hand we have the Gransforth Brooks Small Forest Axe and in the other hand we have the Gransforth Brooks Scandinavian Axe. Now, if you're looking at these two axes and you're not too sure which one to get, then you've clicked on the right video. Hopefully today I can uh, show you the pros and cons with both of them and uh, at the end we'll determine which one is best. Well, not necessarily which one is best, but which one is best suited for you because at the end of the day, these are both hellish like they are amazing right so before we start swinging these about and test them out i want to run through a little bit of information and some of the specifications that Gransforth brook themselves have on their website so starting off with the small forest axe so what they say about this is the Gransforth small forest axe has a larger head and a longer handle than the wildlife hatchet and I do kind of associate this myself as um, a beastie hatchet like, which therefore provides more chopping power. However, it is still small enough to fit in a rucksack. Yes, definitely is. The small forest axe is excellent for felling trees and limbing. The length of the handle is 50 centimeters. The total weight is one kilogram and it comes with a vegetable tanned leather sheath. Okay, so what they say about the Scandinavian Forest Axe is, Scandinavian Forest Axe is a professional axe, ideal for felling larger trees and for limbing a felled tree. The long handle gives more power to cut. So the length is 64 centimeters. The total weight of this one is 1.2 kilograms, so 200 grams heavier. And again, it comes with the sheath. The small forest axe, the cheapest I could find as of today, January, 2023 it's 132 pound and the scandinavian axe is 159 pounds so there's a slight difference there what we're looking at like 50 30 30 quid i think 30 pounds extra for the the, the bigger one i do also want to say um i'm no axe expert like to be honest i've just started getting into uh, the axes and that and uh, these both have been a game changer when i first started out going camping and all that and bushcrafting i did originally buy like a cheap 15 pound hatchet from screw fix and i took it out one day tried to chop up some firewood and it just wasn't working it wasn't working out and that weighed about i don't know it was pretty heavy for a hatchet i guess it was over one kilogram so lugging that weight about and i wasn't getting on with it and i thought i don't need an axe i'll just uh, get by without one and for a year coming up two years i did i just got by camping without an axe and then i came across these and uh, i'd never want to go into the woods without one of these axes now like these are real game changers so if you have had experience with a really cheap axe before and you don't get on with them don't let that put you off because uh the the high priced ones they are quite expensive but i think there is probably even more expensive axes out there as well so these are they're quite high priced but they are worth your money. You also get, I think it's a 25 year warranty on the actual heads of the axes. So if there's any problems with it, you've got that uh, You've got that covered. I'll take you down by my rucksack and I just wanna show you how convenient they are to pack and how maybe it's not convenient they are to pack. So I'll take you over and we'll have a look at that. Right, okay, so the, the small forest axe, as you can see, this goes in my rucksack, which is Oh, I don't even know. I think it's, um, you're looking at 30 litre, 30 litre rucksack um, without lifting the head up on it or anything. But as you can see there, hopefully that that fits in perfect, to be honest, that is the perfect height. I can close this, no problem. The ax is in there. Now for the Scandinavian ax, it is going to stick out a bit. It does have the longer handle. Um, it's not too much of a problem. You can work around it. You can still close the pack. However, with my axes on a normal camp out or something, the inside of my pack is going to be filled up with other stuff. So I tend to keep my axe on the outside of the pack, which also I want to show you. So we have the little side pouches here on this pack and some straps to tie it down. Um, with the small forest axe, the head, it has a slightly smaller head. So that actually fits in pretty perfect. If you can see in there, it fits in that little side pocket. Boom, you can clip these on, clip that on. And again, that sits perfect. The height is perfect. I can now put like a wool blanket 
over the top here, you close that down and it's, it's ideal there. It's snug, it's completely in the pocket, it's not going anywhere. Um, but with the Scandinavian forest axe, let's get that out, you'll notice that with the bigger head that does not fit into that um, bottom pocket, or at least fully it doesn't fit in. So my ways around this is put in half of the head and you can still tie it down. So it'll tie it down. However, I do find with this method is it is kind of stable, but not completely. If um, you're jumping up and down on falling down trees or you're working your way through some bush and that, sometimes that will pop out. Um, my ways around this is, how do I get my way around it? You can do it the other way around. So you can have it up here. So you can just have these clips. As you can see there, that is pretty secure. Clip this down on this one. That You can cinch these up so that axe head will not go anywhere. Once the bag's full, this is cinched down. This axe head won't go anywhere. Or anywhere. However, when you're picking your bag up and off of the ground, you've got now this long handle you've got to kind of deal with. That kind of gets in the way a bit. So, like Grants Forthbrook say on the website, definitely the small forest axe, hands down, is much more packable friendly. If you're all about packing your bag really nicely, having it everything right and nice, the small forest axe, that is, you're looking at that one. The Scandinavian axe, it does work. You can work your way around it. You might have to do a little bit of problem solving. A lot of the packs, you're probably gonna have the same type of situations that I have with my pack. It, it does fit, you can make it work, but it's it's a little bit awkward however way you try to pack it. So pack-wise, Scandinavian Forest Axe does win that one like, and it's a little bit lighter, 200 grams. That doesn't mean anything for me, to be honest. Now, um, a couple of fallen down pine trees behind me, as you can see, so yeah, let's not waste any time and let's uh, chop off some limbs. Um, primarily, these are limbing axes you can chop down smaller trees. But yeah, let's uh, give these axes a try on these downed pine trees. Okay, so again, we'll start off with these small forest axe. Get this out, we've got some nice uh, sticky out bits here we can have a go at. So, small forest axe. Like instantly, I am just, I want to go double handed and you can with this axe, but you are, you're restricted. Very nice, very nice. Can you see this one here? Again, it's a, it's a beautiful axe, it still has some lovely bite to it. There we go. Small forest axe. And now we'll give the Scandinavian big boy a try. I love just being able to get it. Oh, the double handed swing on this is insane. Now that was a bit of a chunkier branch coming out there, but still it had no bother. And actually, some nice fat wood there. Can you see that? Nice fat wood. Let's do a couple more with the Scandinavian axe. So although this has the longer handle and it is slightly heavier, you can still use it pretty efficiently with just one hand. And that there, this is a good example, right? So it has the longer handle. You can still use it pretty well with one hand. However, with having that longer handle, it can bump into things when you're trying to do some finer work. I've noticed a few times it bumps in, like I'm trying to maybe carve some pegs for me tarp. Um, when I'm doing that delicate work, 
have to position myself right because that longer handle does get in the way occasionally. Definitely not a deal breaker, but just something you need to watch out for. Oh yeah, Kasha. Okay, this is quite fun to be honest. So I'm just going to work my way up the tree a little bit, switching between the small forest axe and the Scandinavian axe. And as you can see, the branches are getting bigger. So we'll work our way up and see how they perform. Beautiful fat wood in there. Very nice. Right, okay, so hopefully that little demonstration um, was able to show you that both of these axes are very efficient in this type of work. Now, what I want to do just for fun it's completely out of both of these axes depth but actually just come straight into this uh, pine tree and just do some chopping on it see see what happens see how they perform but straight away you already know with the long handle even just um limbing some of that tree just you can generate much more power having that long handle although saying that it still is a beast. I don't want to put anyone off these axes. If you're looking for the smaller pack size, still great. However, I like the big boy like myself, to be honest. But yeah, that's uh, just a bit of fun. Demonstration purposes and that. We're just going to hack in to this pine tree. Let's do it. Small forest axe first. Let's give it a go. So, not too bad, it's, it's eaten into it like. This is a massive tree like, so it's out of its depth, but it still, it performs, it still does all right. So that was the small forest axe. Let's give the Scandinavian axe a try. Okay, let's move a little bit along and we'll do a few swings, Scandinavian axe.
Okay, so the Scandinavian axe, you can tell because I'm able to generate more force the longer handle, it's biting in to that wood a lot easier or a lot more than the small forest axe. So the holes, I didn't time it or anything. I didn't count me uh, swings, but that's a deep hole. It's not as deep and you know, it's not rocket science. It's what you'd expect. Bigger head, longer handle, generate more force. So obviously it's gonna be better for these situations. Last little test I wanna do is make some pegs and show you what it's like doing some of the finer work. Okay. Okay, so we've got ourselves a little twig and it's probably is a little bit on the small size, but for the delicate work that we wanna try here, it's probably, it's a good example. So imagine we're gonna make some pegs here. So the small forest ax. Nice. Okay, nice. Um, peg size. It's a bit dead. Never mind. Try again. So I need to be really delicate with this, with this dead wood, because it'll snap quite easy. But as you can see here, hopefully, you can see okay. It's shaving that really nicely, and I need to be delicate as well. There we go. Got a nice little peg there. See if we can do a notch in the top as well with it. So that small forest axe is working really well. I don't want to snap the stick, but there we go. It's all you need for a peg, small forest axe. Really impressed with that there, to be honest. Um, yeah, and obviously you can hammer it in the head as well. Very nice. Okay. And the Scandinavian axe, let's see how this performs. So I have our stick from the same branch. So again, <laughs> It's working really well. I, the, the thing I would say is you can be delicate with it. You can take these little pieces of wood. You can do the fine work with it. However, you do feel this, you'll not feel the extra weight, I would say in your rucksack when you're carrying this one into the woods, but you will feel the extra weight when you're trying to do this more delicate work with one hand. And I'm trying to just steadily hold the ax and do fine work. This is when you can feel the extra weight in your wrist doing this. But apart from that, that is chopping really nice. Let's try and do um, this part. Yeah, feeling the weight. It's a little bit harder to be accurate on the delicate tasks because of that extra weight, but it still, it gets the job done really well still. Right. Um, there we go, the small forest axe and the Scandinavian forest axe. Let me know if you have one and which one you have or what axe you're using. Like I say, the Scandinavian axe, I'm willing to put up with that extra weight to have that extra swinging power. It's, it's the ultimate one like. And also with these axes, whoever you're buying it from, you can ask them if you want one of the darker wood handles. So you can see on the small forest axe, it's quite light because I just, I just, I just bought the axe, I didn't uh, write anything, um, requesting anything, but with the Scandinavian axe, I did and ask for a dark wood handle. A lot of people probably think that is ridiculous, like at the end of the day, it's a tool, it's just there to do the job, but I'm a bit sad like this and I like things, um, certain colors and stuff. So I asked for the dark wood handle and I love this one, to be honest. 
as you can see, I, I think the wood, the grain, I'm no expert, expert but um, just the whole look of this is really well, really good. This one, the wood doesn't look as cool to me for some reason. This is this is ridiculous. A lot of people have probably clicked off now that I've started talking about this type of stuff, but um, it does factor in for me. So this side is quite light. That side's quite dark. Um, but there we go. There it is. This is made from CS. Whoever that guy is, that is made from BK. Um, and honestly, the quality in both of them is pretty good as far as my untrained eye can see as the ends of them people like to check the how the grain of the wood um goes down there sheath a lot of people uh give these a bit of grief but i don't mind them it, it works really well to me that cheap axe 15 pound one just came with like a little plastic bit to go over the actual blade which kept falling off i kept losing so having a proper sheath is really nice i am not complaining about that so there we go guys hope you enjoyed this video um hopefully i didn't rant on gone on too long i apologize for not uploading in a while um to be honest uh <laughs> just been lazy man but hopefully we'll get back to the weekly uploads before winter ends i want to do some challenges like my next camp out i want to go out without a sleeping mat and actually see how important sleeping mats are we hear it all the time sleep mats very important you lose a lot of um, heat without having a sleeping mat so we're going to go test that out on the next camp out but yeah hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe thank you very much and i'll see you on the next one man peace